So, the first thing when you're doing anything with acorns is harvesting. You can't buy acorns. Most people don't look at these as like a f any food value when in reality they do. So, go to any park and you're gonna find, pretty much any park in Oregon, you're gonna find oak trees. Uh, most oak trees in Oregon aren't uh, native, but they were really popular to plant. So, when you're hunting, anytime you see an acorn on the ground, they're gonna be of this year's vintage. Uh, last year's crop of nuts will, at this point in the year, have already uh, already put seeds into the ground or already sprouted so you aren't gonna be able to find those so anytime you see a nut that's in the ground they'll be buried in the grass or fallen or anything like that um, they're gonna be they're gonna be this year's and they're gonna be safe to eat uh, you'll see when we crack them open that not all of them will have will be whole and you'll see the different varieties where there might be mold in them um, there might be insects bugs worms larvae that kind of stuff uh, but anytime you see a nut in the fall, it's dropped on the ground, uh, these are going to be ones to pick up and start to harvest. Got up at six. Don't tell me I'm not dedicated. I'm going to go learn how to make acorn pudding, as well as some other stuff. I'm going to give it a shot. What we're going to need, if I can get this right, one, a bag of acorns. Second one, so we can smash always like that. A brick, maybe a few. A hammer, I gotta pay for it. And then to collect your goods, bring in some Tupperware. And the guy that I'm taking it from is a knife. Says, t tells me to bring a knife. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with the knife. So, with that and my great personality, it's gonna be a good day. Hopefully I get some video that I can share with you and you can enjoy. All right. Alright, so as I'm driving, I figured I'd explain kind of the process behind this, or like the basics. So what we're doing today is we're going to be heading down, we're heading to Portland. This guy that I, I'm meeting up with, he's kind of a, he's a wild food foods expert. I'm not. I know, I understand the basics, but to do this kind of stuff and to teach you guys, I've got to learn, I've got to become experts in other aspects. So in this case, I know how to do most of the stuff with filberts, or hazelnuts. Um, they're a lot easier. They don't have tannins, um, which cause like a really bitter flavor into any food really tannins are in. Um, and so this guy, you can do it online. You can look up this whole process online. My thought is going to an expert, he might have other tips, other ideas um, that, that aren't really shared online. We're going to see if that's the case. Uh, next week, we're, or either this week or next week, we're going to be looking at online articles on how to do this, and then what this guy is teaching me, what this process is. Um, we'll see if there's anything different or if it's the same. And if it's the same, uh, we might be able to look up and see, use some of these other resources, some of these other experts that are online and presenting the material. We might be able to use their material instead of having to pay for the course. That's the beauty of, of the internet is sometimes you don't have to pay for it and you still get the same information. So, I'm kind of the test dummy. That's kind of been my life is the test dummy. So, uh, we're going to do that again today, and then we're going to present that findings in class. All right, we'll see you when I get there. All right, guys, so the ones I picked yesterday are considered red oak. We'll bring in some leaves so you can see. Uh, we have a couple different options that people brought in. 17 people are taking the class, so this is kind of a mixture. Um, just different kinds of oak. I think it's different kinds of oaks. I don't, he didn't really know what they were. Um, and then these are considered Gary Oaks. So Gary Oaks, he was saying, are the only, the only native species in Oregon that are actually a, the, the oak tree. Gary Oak is also called a white oak. So, pretty cool. We're going to be able to taste all of these. You guys probably won't, but I'll be able to. Alright. process it's kind of long so be ready for this guys you're gonna take these regular regular acorns and there's different kinds and they're gonna each look a little different they look almost like a walnut when you end with it you're gonna end up with a pile of meat you're gonna end up with a, a 
I'm thinking of shells. The shells, what I found, what I just heard, are full of tannins as well as like the caps. Very nice. The Thank caps you. are full of tannins. And across the world, tanners that tan hide actually use these and pull that tannin out to tan the hide of animals. The other piece is you have to watch out for different so things. Need so let me zoom in here. As you're opening up these things, you're going to find a couple things. You're going to find worms, larva, mold. You're going to look, if you look at the shell, you can see the different holes. Those are actually, actually exit Beautiful. holes. Beautiful. This one we named Bob. Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah. An hour's worth of work for four people. So this is the leaching process. He used a cloth, a cotton cloth, uh, muslin, or muslin, something along the muslin, I think, is what he said. Um, so what this whole process does is it takes these, takes that layer of acorn uh, powder, and if you can see, you can actually see it on top. And so what it's doing is it's taking that, that fresh, clean water, is taking, and kind of like coffee, um, it's pulling out a, a liquid, it's pulling out material. So if you look down below, you see that really dark color and all that, so they call that a tannin, or tannin or tannic acid. Um, so we're going to do this a couple times. Uh, and use cold water so it doesn't take as much of the, the nutritional value and uh, properties to it, cooking properties. Um, Native Americans did the same process, and when they did this, they did uh, sometimes they would use a bog or a creek and they'd leave it for three weeks and then come back. Or uh, on, the, uh, on the coast, they would use sand. They'd dig a hole and they'd pour water over it and the sand would act like that cloth. Um, but that sand would also get with the meal and it would grind down their teeth. So towards the end of this, as this progresses, you're going to get a lot less liquid and all of your powder is going to get uh, condensed towards the bottom without the tannins, so it's almost it's going to start looking more and more like almost like a peanut butter. But look at that, more like a sand even really. Um, and this will just continue to condense, so it's, it's just draining slowly through uh, through the cloth. And I think so. This is the second time we've done this with put water in it, uh, and so this next time we're going to make a, a pudding. Uh, with this material, so hopefully it's pretty good. We'll see. You could also use it for, uh, for, for you could also use it for anything else that you would use normal flour for. Um, yeah, well, uh, so this is the pudding ingredient. So we're gonna have brown sugar, vanilla extract. Looks like that is maple flavoring. Some milk. Looks like whole milk. And some water. You can see the whole process as it goes into the water. Towards the end of this, it's so thick that the water won't even go, will take a very long time for that water to go through. Everything you see down below is almost like a peanut butter mixture. Um, you'll find the flavor isn't very uh, strong anymore, and the tannins are out of it, so it's not very bitter. Um, however, uh, that flavor will come back out if you use it to cook. So this is the finished product. It's a pudding. It should be phenomenal. I haven't eaten it yet though. So if you taste yeah. it.
So this is a totally different process. It's called this, you're going to distill volatile oils from garden items. You can pretty much use, well, you can use, use a lot of different pieces. Today we're going to use uh, lemon balm and mint. So you use a big pot, you put a brick inside of it, just so that it helps uh, separate the warm water and the warm uh, plant matter from your collection device. Your collection device is two bowls. Uh, you're going to put one inside the other with water and freeze it solid. The reason for that is to keep it cold. cutting boards and some knives. And uh, your cover piece. The cover piece is a walk lid with a bolt run down so it has something to something to drip off of and it'll sit down on top. Uh, and the volatile oils are going to, uh, they're going to be, uh, they're going to volatilize or they're going to evaporate uh, more quickly than water does. It's going to be a below the boiling point and so it'll start collecting in there prior to uh, water boiling. So give it a shot. So you're going to be cutting up the different material you cut up. I, wonder, I don't, do you guys know does it have to be fine or can it he just, said the, he finer said the, better. Yeah, the finer the better for this. All right. I would imagine because the more cuts, it's going to open up your plant cells and provide more surface area. So collecting volatile oils, you really don't have to use it on propane, you can do it at home. Um, you just need a big enough stove and it's really low heat, so um, there's barely any, any flame if at all. I'm not even sure if he has this thing lit right now. It's not lit, he just preheated the water. So it's just a warm, used, used a teapot, and uh, and so just that enough heat, that, enough heat that's not boiling, it's just a nice warm water, uh, will cre uh, be enough to evaporate those volatile oils, which uh, is exactly uh, an essential oil. You might not know what that is, however, your mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa, they probably might, they might be using them. They're pretty expensive. Um, and you could, you could create a, a whole thing of volatile oils for, for free if you have it in your yard.